Cab for Mr. Miller. Wrong house. Miller's next door. Oh, sorry, mister. <laughs> this fog's so thick, I'm lucky to even get the right block. See you, license. Stephen Abbott. Oh, gosh, I didn't recognize you, Lieutenant. Better turn on your lights. Oh, my ear. Okay. It's all night for a murder, huh, Lieutenant? Yeah. any better than me. Shadrach Jones, you come with me this minute. Yes, sir. One, Steve! Oh! Oh. Oh, oh! Darling, I almost thought you were a burglar. What do you mean, almost? Well, I made up my mind to hit the burglar, and I just couldn't change it. Well, that's dandy. Why are you coming in that way? Well, I didn't want Madame Dracula down there to see me. Oh. Oh. Darling, does it hurt terribly? Oh, no. It feels wonderful. Chad, get Mr. Rabbit a bottle of beer. That'll make him feel better. Yes. Steve. 
TV. Hmm? Did Philip say anything? No, didn't say a word. Didn't you... Didn't you get them? Sure, I got them. They were right where you said they would be. There you are, Skipper. There's your flaming youth. Six. Oh, you're a darling. I was afraid he'd make trouble. I'm glad nothing happened. Yeah, me too. Hey, Shad, where's my beer? Dry as a feather. You care for some man? Uh-huh. Ah, I feel better. Jack, how about some sandwiches? Sure, boss. I'm fresh out of shredded coconut, ma'am. Be all right if I use the sardines instead, won't it? Of course, Shad. Make a sandwich for yourself, too. Yes, sir. Abbott Super Specials. Yes, sir. I think it's pretty. I must have picked it up off Philip's desk. I'll take it back tomorrow. Stevie, did you read them? Letters? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, darling, thank you. And now that Philip isn't holding them over us any longer, you can put him in jail for his gambling. Sure, honey, sure. What are you looking at? Bring him right over here, Shad. Won't Lieutenant Richards be mad? If you make an important arrest like Philip Wallace, the mayor'll have to make you a captain instead of him. Won't he? Eat some grub, honey. Forget about that fashion plate. He's probably got enough troubles right now. Here we are, Lieutenant. I never sit down to dinner, but something breaks loose. It's been 14 months since I've had any dessert. What did you say was the name of the corpse? Philip Wallace. Say, Grady. Yes, sir. Wasn't Wallace the name of the man Lieutenant Abbott's been investigating? Yes, sir. I'd have thought so. You'd think I could have one case without him in my hair. What are you? Social call? I'm the dead man's brother, Edward Wallace. How do you do? How did you find out he was dead? Clairvoyant? I tried to telephone him, and Connie told me. That's Philip's man, you know. Very clear, very lucid. You phoned, and he told you. When was the last time you saw him? I had dinner with him. Left him about 9.30. Hey, did you have any dessert? Yes, unusually good. Good evening, Lieutenant. Remind me to get you a uniform with a zipper. Yes, sir. Is written here yet? Yes, sir. Redden. I'm in no mood to play hide and go to see. Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, we're just looking for the murder gun. We haven't got that yet. Where's the servant? The one at the phone. Well, we ain't got him yet. He skipped out. Well, what have we got? Got the body. Well, that's a start. You think you can keep track of it? Perhaps you better look around, see if anything is missing or disturbed. Hello, Jack. Hi, Lieutenant. How's business, Doc? Dead, Dead as, as usual. Dead as usual. What are the damages? Three bullet wounds over the heart, bruise on the back of the head. Possibly from the fall. Some shooting, Lieutenant. That killer's a marksman. Yeah, when we catch him, I'll put him on the rifle team. I'd say he's about as good as Steve Abbott. That's what I meant. Say, Steve Abbott was investigating Wallace. I know, I know. Go look for the gun. How long's he been dead, Doc? I'd say his wristwatch was about right. Nine fifty-five, eh? Mm -hmm. Ten forty now. Where were you about nine fifty-five? Home. 
Got there about then. Walked. Lovely evening out, the fog and all. What with the fog and all? Anybody see you come in? No. Oh, yes, I spoke to the manager of my apartment, the Lafayette. Very convenient. What about the room? Anything gone? Hard to remember. Everything seems just about the same. Except the desk lighter, it's gone. It was round, silver, about that size. Work, too. Hey, Lieutenant, here's the gun. Found it right out there on the flower bed. Hey, look. It's a target pistol, just like we use that on the range. Wouldn't it be fortunate if Steve Abbott were unable to tell us where he was at 9.55? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Stevie, you didn't read these? Really? What you did before we got married is none of my business. You weren't afraid to read them, were you? No. You don't sound very sure about it. After all, Philip said if I didn't lay off, he'd show them all over town, and you said that would just about kill you. Steve Abbott, you ought to be ashamed. You read those letters this minute. Not me. I got ethics. Uh, I bet you, you think they're hot stuff. Well, aren't they? If I had a mind like... Oh! Mr. Abbott? Yeah? You being a man about town, I guess you don't already got your Mardi Gras costume. That's in my wife's department. Only this year, I'm positively not going as little boy blue. Yes, she is a little big for that, boss. What are you wearing, Shad? That's my trouble. I ain't collected no rain. What are you going to do about it? Well, I got two pair of dice. But... Well, that's a pretty good start. Yeah, but I told my gal I had a costume that was bound to win the first prize at the ball. What's the prize? 100 simoleons. We was figuring on getting mad on that. Looks like you got trouble, son. Sure do, boss. If we don't win, that woman ain't gonna leave enough of me to hang up. You want something novel, something special? Yeah. I remember an outfit I wore a couple of years ago. It was a uh, striped uniform with a chain around the ankle. That ain't no novelty for me, boss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a news flash. Philip Wallace, wealthy insurance broker of this city, was shot to death in his home a few minutes ago. For further details, read your morning newspaper. Oh! Excuse me, Bob. We gotta start traveling quick. Yeah, where to? Anywhere, India, the South Seas, little America. Well, um, why don't we join the Navy? Stevie, be serious. It's on the radio. Now, look, Skipper, just take it easy. Oh, Stevie, you shouldn't have killed him. I know, baby. But it was just that I, I hadn't killed anybody in a couple of days. <gasps> I hope it was a cheap one. Chad, answer that. Good evening. How are you? Where are you going, boy? Who, me? I was just closing the door. Yeah, we'll close it from this side. Yes, sir. You remember the dapper Lieutenant Richards, dear? How do you do? How do you do? Sergeant Reardon, the department wit. How do you do? Have a beer? Beer? Why, yes. Don't mind if I do. What about you, Ridden? No, he's on duty. Uh, one beer, Shad. I'm sorry to disturb you at this late hour, but I just dropped in to check up on a man named Philip Wallace. What about Philip Wallace? Well, you're investigating him, aren't you? Well, I was. Even now that he's dead, I planned to... How did you know he was dead? Ridden? Well, since he mentioned it, how did you know he was dead? Well, we've been keeping up the installments on our radio, Lieutenant. As I was saying, even now that he's dead, I'd plan to continue the investigation. Oh, that's fine, Lieutenant, fine. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. We've been friends for a long time now, haven't we, Steve? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, you know we have. Now, this is for your own good. I want to help you, but you've got to help me, too. Well, you know I'd tell you anything you want to know, Lieutenant. Good. Where's your target pistol? Right this way. I guess it isn't here. Have you seen it, Ethel? Oh, I, I put it away somewhere. Let me see. You uh, better sit down, boys. This is liable to take quite a while. Well, 
I know it's in this corner someplace. Oh! Pardon me. I hate to leave things lying around loose. Well, I hope you feel better, Lieutenant. Much. And I'd feel still better if I knew where you were at 9.55 tonight. That's easy. I was home all evening. Wasn't I, dear? Yes, dear. Is that right? Yes, dear. Well, I'm mighty glad you've got an alibi, Steve. You know, I wouldn't want anything to happen to you, even if it did mean that I got the uh, captaincy. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got a match? Right here, Lieutenant. Thanks. Steve, since you've been investigating Wallace, you can be a lot of help to us. Thank you. You'll be available, won't you? Oh, yes, if you're on deck in the morning. Uh, you weren't going anywhere, were you? Just to bed. Oh, well then. Good night. Good night. Good night. Chad, show the gentleman to the door. Can I go two balls? Chad, if you want some help on that costume, uh, you better forget the whole evening. Boss, I'll be as silent as a... as a... Corpse. <laughs> hey, hey, hey there. Take it easy, Skipper. I'm not there, man. Honest, Injun. He was dead before I got there. Oh, Stevie, I'm so glad. But I'm sure Lieutenant Richard still suspects us. And we'll take care of that tomorrow. We'll throw him so many clues he won't know whether he's chasing Jack the Ripper or a flock of butterflies. <laughs> Davey, that's wonderful. But what good will it do? Time, Skipper, time. We have to find that murderer before Richard spins the job on us. Davey, you're so smart. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Let's go to bed. Stevie, hmm? are you sure we didn't kill him? Good night, Skip. Morning, darling. Morning, Skipper. Here, you better put these in a safe place. Are you sure you don't want to read them? Well, almost. Then, then you do want to read them. Uh-uh. All right, just for that, I won't let you read them ever. Hey, who are you writing to now? Well, you said we had to confuse Lieutenant Richards. think the lieutenant would notice they're all in the same handwriting, do you? I never thought of that. So long, Skipper. I'll see you later. Oh, no, you don't, Steve Abbott. I'm going with you. Now, look. You remember what happened on the last case you helped me with? <laughs> you mean the one where I got put in jail? I mean the one where we both got put in jail. I don't think I'll be late. I am a it. Thanks for the gum, Sarge. Yeah, I got some around here, Sarge. Abbott. I'm getting tired of supplying you with gum. All right, all right. If you're going to get sore. Why did you have to leave the house? Busy? 
Come in, Abbott, come in. Lieutenant Abbott, Mr. Carney, the late Philip Wallace's bodyguard. Now, Mr. Carney, will you kindly repeat for this gentleman why you so promptly left the house last night after finding Philip Wallace's body? It was my night off. It was his night off. Do you mind if I ask Carney a question or two, Lieutenant? If you can think of anything I haven't asked him, I'll give you a set of dishes. I've got a set of dishes. Did you hear the three shots? <laughs> well, did you? I've just been telling him. The only thing I heard after the boss's brother left was a noise like somebody busting a paper bag. I went into the drawing room and saw Mr. Wallace sitting at his desk. He said he guessed it was a car had backfired. What did you do then? All right, Mr. Carney. Tell the gentleman what you did. I went upstairs and took a shower. He went upstairs. And took a shower. What time was that? Curiously enough, it was at 9.55. Five minutes of 10. A time when everybody in the United States was doing something else beside killing Philip Wallace. He wasn't dead at 9.55. How do you know? Because I heard him talking to a taxi driver after 10 o'clock. That was the murderer. That's all, Connie. Thank you. Say, Lieutenant, uh, this dame here, uh, I mean, this lady said, hello, Steve. Uh, she saw Steve drive up to his house last night. What time was it? Exactly 10.15. Madam, you're certain it was Mr. Abbott? Absolutely certain, Lieutenant. Was anybody with you? No, Lieutenant. I live alone. Quite alone. Thank you. I'll get in touch with you later. Murderer. Well, Steve, that breaks up your alibi like a frame house in a cyclone. Oh, I don't pay any attention to that daffy dame. She sees a lot of things nobody else sees. You implying she's uh, mentally unbalanced? Yeah, that's it. She's crazy. Love crazy. Do you know that dame's been breathing on my neck for months? Is that so? Sure, sure. And I wouldn't give her a tumble. Now she's sore at me. You know how those dames are. She'd do anything to put me in a spot. She said she saw you drive in last night at 10.15. How about that? Well, that, that must have been the guy bringing my car back. What guy? Well, the, the fellow was greasing it. What's his name? Where's the garage? Yes? Odell wants Steve Abbott. I better hurry. All right, Abbott, but don't get too far. I still want to know about that garage. <laughs> what are you waiting? Let's have one down here, Miss Louisiana. Okay. <coughs> Oh, no, boys, no. Go on, give her a kiss. Hey, oh, no, no, oh, it's too yes, embarrassing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Here, have a gum drop. Thanks, Uncle Dan. They're thank a lot you healthier for you than coffee. See you in Atlantic City. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's bad for your figure. <laughs> Goodbye, young lady. Remember, your Uncle Dan will be rooting for you in Atlantic City, win, lose, or draw. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pardon me, please. I want to talk to you, Steve. What do you know about the Wallace killing? Just what I read in this morning's paper. That's not what Richards said. Well, you know Richards. He'd do anything to sense that captaincy. He's very suspicious of you, Steve. Well, that's too bad. You didn't kill him, did you? Certainly not. I knew it. <laughs> well, you're one of my settlement boys. Have a gumdrop. Thanks. <laughs> Sit down. By the way, did you ever get proof that Philip Wallace was operating that gambling place, the Mississippi Inn? Of course. Why didn't you report it? I got a line on something much bigger. The man who runs the city's entire gambling ring. I'm not a gum room. Who is it? I don't know yet. But I'll sure keep on working. No, that wouldn't be fair to you, Steve. Hmm? Richards is very prejudiced. I can handle Richards all right. No, I've made up my mind, Steve. I'm taking you off the gambling investigation. Give you a chance to clear yourself in the Wallace case. I want you to have as good a chance as Richards when the mayor appoints the new police captain. All right, Uncle Dan. If you insist. Drop around to the Big Brother's gym when you get time. They're turning out some great basketball teams. I'll do that. If you run into any trouble, well, don't hesitate to come and see me. Remember, your Uncle Dan will be right here rooting for you. Win, Win lose, or draw. <laughs> <laughs> have a gumdrop. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Abbott. Hello, Shad. How'd you know where to find me? Miss Abbott told me. Oh. 
What do you want? It's about that costume, Mr. Adler. That's right. I forgot all about it. Uh-oh. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'll be back in a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You didn't fool me for a minute. I didn't particularly intend to. But you weren't going to count me in, were you? Now that you mention it, no. By the way, how did you find out about it? I was there, Joe. Oh. Well, in that case... That looks pretty. Like raspberry jam. How's it taste? Very nice. Only one free sample to a customer. I thought the customer was always right. Not in this store. Oh. Hey. Don't you ever talk to girls? Not during business hours. Now, if you'll just remove the hosiery. You're the first man that ever asked me to do that. Mr. Wallace, there's a guy coming in to see you. A copper. Yes? Do you always wear that to work? This is my costume for the parade tonight. Oh. Thought for a minute I walked into the waxworks. You Edward Wallace? Yes. I'm Abbott, Detective Bureau. This is my brother George. How are you? Pleased to meet you, chum. I suppose you've come about the murder. Messy business, wasn't it? Murder generally is. Hey, chum. Right, chum. What I'm looking for is a motive. Somebody that hated your brother. I can't think of anybody who didn't. I hated him. George hated him. Didn't you, George? Not enough to kill him, chum. What was the secret of his popularity? He was a natural-born stinker. Well, who gets the estate? You and George? Unfortunately for the stockholders, yes. Phil was cut out for a tycoon. I've never cared for figures. At least not on paper. <laughs> Speaking of figures, who's the peroxide floozy outside? What was that, chum? Oh, who's a floozy, Flatfoot? Darling. Huh? Yes, I made a mistake. Well, I guess you did, chum. That's my girl. She sings at the Mississippi Inn. Mississippi Inn, huh? What's her name? And what's your name, sugar? Janet Price. Janet Price. Say, how long do we have to stick around here? We're leaving right away, sugar. Hey, wait a minute, chum. Where were you about 9.55 last night? Why, uh, I was at the movies with Janet, wasn't I, sugar? Sure you were, sugar. Then you didn't sing at the Mississippi Inn last night. Doesn't sound like it, does it? Well, that's something I can check. You can if you can get in, Flatfoot. Sweetie pie. I see you, Mahogany, but I don't recognize you. This is me, honey, Shad Jones. Only Shad Jones I know is one which lied to me by having a handsome costume for the ball tonight. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's going to win a hundred bucks and get married on it. But, honey, I'm working on that right now. If you happens to know him, you can tell him from me that he better come through. Because if he don't, he's in the worst mess he ever heard of. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Say, what do you think you're doing there, boy? Just sitting here, boss, harming nobody. Well, unsit yourself. Taking your car. Huh? You're crazy. Here's my car. I sure is confused. You sure is. Come on, hop in. One more stop, and we'll see about that costume. Yes.
How do you like that, Skipper? Well, he got away. Up, I guess, just blew up. Now, That's take it easy, right. folks. Take it easy. There's nothing to be excited about. Just a man doing a little shooting. A little, a little shooting. Shooting. Come on, darling. Well, I... Jesus, shooting? Steve, I don't understand. What was he shooting at you for? I can guess. By the way, Skipper, thanks for saving my life. I knew I could help if I followed you. Now, you're coming right home with me. I want to see if you're hurt. Now, darling, I'm, I'm perfectly all right. Oh, no, you're not. You're under arrest. For what? For knocking off Philip Wallace. Read all about the Wallace murder. Wealthy playboy killed. Paper, mister? All about the Wallace murder. Paper, Mr. Abbott? Sure, Joe. Thank you. This is silly, Reardon. Richards hadn't got a thing on me. I know you got a couple of witnesses that saw your car parked in front of the Wallace place. Saw my car? Well, there must be a thousand sedans like mine in New Orleans. But there ain't that many suspects in the Wallace case. Oh. How'd they happen to see me? They were necking down the street. How could they see anything if they were necking? They was resting. Floors, please. Four. Three. Seven. Third floor. This is my floor. Let me through, please. Excuse me. What is it, miss? What happened? He pinched me. You did oh, not. You did too. Where? None of your business. Say, hey, where do you think you are? That sort of thing isn't done in this country. I demand that you apologize. This isn't Europe, you know. Somebody call a policeman. Well, I'm a policeman. A stormtrooper, you mean. Say, are you going to apologize? My fault? What do you mean it's my fault? It's not even in my department. Well, yeah. Yeah, but I did. But I. I that. Oh, sorry. Hey, listen, I'm not going to argue with you all day. If you want to give me the dope, okay, I'll take it. Well, of course, I got a pencil. One hit and run. Two something. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not so fast. Take a little bit slower. How you ever got that job, I'll never know. But it's a lead pipe cinch. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Lieutenant Richards. Lieutenant, listen carefully because I haven't got much time. George Wallace is... Who is this? Never mind who it is. George Wallace is planning to sneak out of town. Sneak out of town? How? Why? He's going in his own car. And if you've got anything at all on the ball, you know why. Yeah. All right. Hello. Hello. Jensen. Yes, Lieutenant. Find out what kind of a car George Wallace drives and put out a pickup call on it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course I've got it. Have these gum, sir? Oh, hi, Steve. Don't mind if I do. Where's the rest of the package? <laughs> Never mind the smart tracks. Haven't you gone in yet? I was waiting for you. Well, I'm here. Well, Mr. Abbott, this is a pleasure. Step inside. Bliss, that call I just got. Trace it. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Abbott, I believe you are the owner of a 1938 Gray Nash sedan. The finance company would deny that. A gray Nash sedan which you declare be in your garage last night. What a memory. In addition to an extraordinary memory, I have positive proof that your car was not in the garage last night, nor was it being greased. We put out a pickup call on George Wallace, Lieutenant, and his car is a 1938 gray Nash sedan. Fine work, Jensen. What kind of a car did you say? 1938 gray Nash sedan. What a coincidence. The same kind of car as mine, exactly. Come in. Now, Lieutenant, do you know that call? Yes. You didn't get it. I didn't get it? No, sir. My records show you got no calls. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes? Willie, what's new in the Waters case? Nothing. I get Stevie and Reardon. I'm coming here. Yes, sir. Well, you heard him. Come on. Yes, sir. And don't yes sir me. You see, Uncle Dan, it's just as I've been telling you. Everyone can confirm his alibi except Connie and Steve. You're crazy. I've got two witnesses, my wife. Oh, no, no, boys. Don't allow this rivalry for the captaincy to run away with us. 
We're faced by a very difficult problem. At 9.55 last night, somebody knocked out Philip Wallace and then shot him three times. Well, maybe the shooting didn't take place at 9.55. What about the broken wristwatch? The broken watches have been faked before. Connie confirms that he was taking a shower. That's the only time when he couldn't hear the three shots. Besides, I don't think he's smart enough to fake the wristwatch evidence. Eh, maybe you're right, but it'll be the first time. I don't think you're being exactly cooperative, Steve. No? No. That's for you, Steve. Thanks. You might at least try to help us. All right, I will. Hello. I'll give you another suspect. Ah, that's fine. Who? All right, darling, I'll meet you anywhere you say. You. Me? Didn't you have two pretty bad quarrels with Wallace? No, no, darling, not you, not you. Just politics, Steve, just over politics, that's all. People have been killed over politics before this. Yes, darling, in 15 minutes, all, all right. right. If it'll please you, add my name to the list. I don't care, I can account for every minute of my time last night. Well, that's fine. If anybody wants to account for my time during the next hour, I'll be having lunch with my wife. Hi, Mr. Wallace. Hello, Abba. How are you getting along? Well, mostly in the wrong direction. You don't look discouraged. I'm not. Have a drink? Thanks, I'm late. I'm in the Mardi Gras parade, you know. Oh, yes. Bye. So long. Well, how's the raspberry jam holding out? Fine, but isn't this a little public? Oh, I thought you were sore at me. I was, but I worked it off. You certainly did. <laughs> Buy you a drink? Why not? Waiter. Yeah? Champagne. Just between you and me, wasn't that alibi of George as a fake? You always have to talk business. I can be persuaded not to. What's your offer? You're smart, aren't you? To put it modestly, I'm probably the smartest man in New Orleans. Is that how you found me here? Because you're the smartest man in New Orleans? Well, truth compels me to admit I uh, came here to meet my wife. Oh, you're married. Disappointed? Well, I may have a little trouble remembering it. I have a little trouble myself that way sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> What's your wife like, Steve? Oh, she's not a bad sort. She's pretty. Maybe a little bird brain, but... Bird oh, no, brain, am pretty... I? <laughs> Second, Janet, I thought I heard my wife. Hello, darling. Don't you darling me. Shh, everybody's looking at Let you. Let them look. I don't Shh. know them either. Steve Abbott, were you promoting that, that... A dame? Oh, 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 well, of course I was promoting her. She's a material witness in the Wallace case. Janet Price. Now I gotta go talk to her all over again, just on your account, tonight. If there's any questioning of blondes to be done, I'll do it. Skipper, she works at the Mississippi Inn and you can't get in there. I can if I go with you. Please, darling, don't help me. You leave Janet Price in the Mississippi into me. You stay here, have a bite to eat, go see a movie, have a good time. I won't be very long, and I, I promise to be very businesslike. You won't get hurt. No, honey, I won't get hurt. What's that? Champagne, Mr. Abbott ordered. For that, for that? Dame. Show him. Chad, what do they play at the Mississippi Inn? I never been in there. Oh, I reckon they play dice, all right. What kind of a game's that? That ain't no game, Miss Abbott. That's a science. Oh. Miss Abbott? Yes? These here is the family's heirloom, Miss Abbott. What are they? There's Shadrach Jones emergency never crap out dice. Oh, that's very kind of you, Shad. Just slip the ones that they give you in your pocket and use them. Is that the way people play? That's the way I always does, Miss Abbott. Yes, indeed. Lady throws another seven. Does that mean that I win again? It does. Boy, I like this game. One too many for me. I'm through. All right, get down, everybody. Bye. 
by the poolroom. Small fry should be in the schoolroom. My, my, put down that cigarette. You ain't a grown up high and mighty yet. Small fry dancing for a penny. Small fry. Seven again. <laughs> Is that Janet Price singing? You ain't the biggest catfish in the sea. You practice. Oh, is she singing? <laughs> Say, lady, aren't you forgetting something? You better listen to your ma and someday practice And then you. Thank you very much. You cash them in right over there. I know. I've been here eight years. I've never seen one like that. I should take you across my knee. You the biggest catfish in the sea. You got your feet all soaking wet. Thank you very much. Oh, me, oh, my small fry. Where can I find Miss Price? Her dressing room's right down that corridor, ma'am. Thank you. Pardon me, can you tell me where I could find Miss Price? Pardon me, can... What's your hurry, sister? Why, <laughs> uh, hello, Mrs. Abbott. Oh, hello. You care to dance? Oh, thank you, Mr. O'Dell. Just call me Uncle Dad. Oh, that's such a cute name. Were those men following you? Yes, they must have found out I was investigating Philip Wallace's murder. Steve here? Oh, no, he doesn't even know I'm here. Oh. Doing a little investigation all by yourself, huh? <laughs> and I've just found another murder in Janet Price's dressing room. Another murder? Yes, a man. I was so frightened. You must be mistaken, Mrs. Abbott. The man was probably drunk. Oh, but he wasn't. He had a knife in his back. That's a very serious accusation to make, Mrs. Abbott. I'm quite sure the man was but, drunk. But I saw... What are we going in here for? I want to have a little talk to you about Steve's carelessness and letting you out alone. But I... May I cut in? Steve. Right. Of course, Steve. Surprised? Oh. I didn't think you looked very happy. I was only dancing with him because those men were following me. What men? The men who were following me when I cashed in my chips. Chips? How much did you win? Three packages. How? Well, the dice Shad gave me. Holy smoke. We gotta get out of here quick. Sorry. But, Steve, aren't you gonna investigate the body? What body? The body in Janet Price's dressing room. It had a knife in his back. I mean, he had a knife in its back. I... No, 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 Skipper, now, just calm down. Take it easy. Are you sure? I'll show you. The guy on the cap up to me didn't answer. I thought it was very impolite, so I spoke to him again. He just fell off. Did you recognize him? No, I didn't see his face. He's lying right over there. Oh. Skipper, you haven't been drinking, have you? Of course not. He was lying right on the couch. I spoke to him, and, and he fell right there, right there on the floor. Oh. I can assure you, she saw no body. But I did, a big, dark-haired man. Maybe it was a drunk. Well, he may have been drunk, but he had a knife in his back, too. How'd you like to be cuffed around a little bit, baby? How'd you like to have your ears pinned back, baby? Hey, 
smash them. Did you recognize the drunken man you saw in Miss Price's dressing room? He wasn't drunk. Darling, I, I think you ought to reconsider that. After all, he probably was drunk. Steve Abbott, he wasn't. He was dead, murdered. Take him upstairs, boy. Don't stand there. Go after them. Someplace. Chad, Chad. If that's a fish, I ain't here. Chad, is that you, Mr. Abbott? Yeah. Who were you expecting? Come on, help us in. How come you choose this route, boss? Never mind that. Help us get in the boat. Okay, boss. Okay. I'll take it easy now. Wait a minute. Wait, I'll get up there and help you. This Can we go home, boss? Not yet. Back up so we can see the Mississippi Inn. What for, boss? To find a body. I sure hopes I can swim. Shh, shh. Sit down. Be quiet. Back up a little more. Oh, you sure do call your shot. Light a match, Chef. Sure, boy. George Wallace. What? If I hadn't written those letters to Philip Wallace, all this wouldn't have happened. Don't be silly, Skipper. Those letters didn't have anything to do with his death. Is that why you haven't asked me what was in them again? Well, I haven't had time. Besides, I'm not very interested. Well, now you'll never see them. I'm going to burn them. Gary, yeah, go ahead. I'll always suspect the worst. Oh, Steve! Hey, hey, take it easy, honey. You want to push us on the road? Well, you always make me so mad when you tease me. I'm not teasing. Steve! Yeah, look, Skipper. It'd be more to the point if you'd try to remember exactly what happened at the Mississippi Inn. Did Uncle Dan say anything that... Oh, don't mention that terrible old smoothie to me. Running around murdering people. I ought to put him in jail. He will be. Not for that. He's going up for heading the city's gambling ring. Steve, why haven't you told someone? The mayor or somebody? Why, Steve, this means you'll be captain. Captain? I'll probably wind up as police commissioner. I get it. Must be my turn to be the murderer again. Is this the man? Yep, that's him. Thanks. Well, that settles it. Take him away, boy. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you going to take the word of a numbskull like that? Numbskull? Say, who do you think you're calling on numbskull? You told me the Miller house was next door yourself. Now, let's keep personalities out of this. What did you do then? Oh, I picked up a woman. Oh, how do you know it was a woman? Got eyes, ain't I? Can you swear it wasn't a man dressed as a woman? Why, well, sure, I can. Remember, it was very foggy that night. Oh, that's right. It was kind of foggy. Of course you can't. And you can't swear it was me you spoke to, can you? 
Well, uh, at that, your voice did Would you sound... go into court and tell a jury it was my voice you heard? That my life hung in the balance? Why, uh, I guess not. There goes your case, Lieutenant. Get ridden in here. Yes. When folks is through walking and talking, I'm finished with them. Boy, you're parking by a fire plug there. Oh, what you care? You ain't gonna get no ticket. Uh-oh. He's talking. What's the matter with you? That's what I want to know. Who is that in there? That ain't nobody, Captain. Just one of Mr. Abbott's corpses. George Wallace, holy smoke. Ryan, surround that building. Guard the doors and windows. Don't let him out of there. No, 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 wait a minute. You better not touch anything. Sergeant, Lieutenant Richards wants to see upstairs right oh, away. Oh, no, I'm busy. Listen, impound that body. Better guard the car. Don't wait. Now, we'll take care of you. Come on, Carl. Give me a hand with this fellow. You know, Lieutenant, I think you ought to apologize before you go. All right, Steve, I do. Maybe I was a little hasty. Will you shake hands? Of course. I'm not one to harbor a grudge. You were just a little over anxious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lieutenant. Red and I've had about enough out of you. Yeah, but Lieutenant, this You point... might have told me the cab driver wasn't positive in his identification. You didn't ask me. Didn't ask you. What is this? Information, please? Lieutenant, that boy's been driving Abbott's car. Oh, that's very back. interesting, Ridden. You found him driving Abbott's car, but did you think to ask him whether he had Abbott's permission or not? No. No, no don't contradict me. You see, that's the kind of help I get from my men. He was driving your car with your permission, no doubt. Well, sure, absolutely. Yeah, but Lieutenant, in the Another word out of, of you, and you're a night watchman. I've got to do it. There's a dead man in the back seat of the car. Red, and I warned you. A what? A dead man with a knife in his back, George Wallace. Oh. So you make me apologize. You make me shake hands with you. And all the time, you've got one of your numerous victims in your car outside. Oh, don't be ridiculous. We found that body, didn't we, Shad? <gasps> Get him, boys! Carlson, the idea in this type of procedure is to wear the subject down, not beat him to death. All right, Sarge. Steve Abbott did go out last night, didn't he? No, sir, boss. He was home all evening. Did you go out? No, sir. Then you must have been here to help with them other murders. Other murders? No, sir. I wasn't here then. Then you did go out, didn't you? Uh-oh. Foot, get out of my mouth. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. He's singing. Are you sure? Sure. Mr. Abbott. Your alibi for last night is a thing of the past. It's defunct. So what? So now you're nailed for both murders. Well, I guess that senses the captaincy for you, doesn't it, Lieutenant? Penetrating. Acute, even. How would you like to be police commissioner? Huh? I can make a commissioner if you'll give me one hour to clear myself. What are you talking about? Uh, take a look at these. There's absolute evidence that Uncle Dan O'Dell is head of the city's gambling ring. Show those to the mayor, and you're in. Are you giving these to me? Certainly. Why, that's decent of you, Steve. I thought you'd appreciate it, Commissioner Richards. <laughs> Commissioner Richards. <laughs> now, the first thing we do with that hour you're going to give me is get a warrant to search Janet Price's apartment. I can't do it, Steve. What do you mean you can't do it? As police commissioner, it's my duty to uphold the law. Why, you dirty double-crosser... Steve? I'm going to give the city an honest, fearless police administration. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Naturally, you don't want a miscarriage of justice. No. Sure you don't. You want to see the real murderer brought in. Mm-hmm. All right, give me that hour and I'll prove to you Janet Price is the real murderer. What makes you think that? Well, she... she's the logical one. Well, you got to do better than that, Steve. All right. I can do better than that. I've got some letters. Some letters that Janet Price wrote to Philip Wallace. I thought you were holding that on me. Darling, where are those letters Janet Price wrote Philip Wallace? Letters? Yes, the ones I brought here from Philip's place. You remember? Love letters. 
Oh. Well, they're in the night table drawer. Will you show them to the lieutenant? To him? Yes, please. That's right. You wouldn't want me to go to jail, would you? Just because I can't show the lieutenant who really killed Philip Wallace. See? Dressed to Philip Wallace. Look at the kisses marked in the corner. <laughs> Here, I'll read you one. Darling, wonderful Philip. I don't talk when I'm near you because my poor little heart goes pity pat so fast I can't get breath. Hey, you're making that up. Nobody ever wrote guff like that. Well, there it is. You can see for yourself. You see, dearest, I just can't help writing you, my hero, even though we were in the same room two hours ago. Oh. <laughs> oh. It is the only way I can whisper to you all the beautiful things I feel. I love you, Angora Kitten. <laughs> Here's another one. Philip, dear. The shape of your head thrills me to the marrow. It is like the head of an old Greek coin. A head a sculptor would give his soul to model. A head a woman would want to caress. <laughs> hey, that woman's kind of soft in the head, eh? Maybe she was just young. I bet lots of girls have written worse letters than that. Do you really think so, dear? You are so manly, so brave, yet so poetic. You are Shelley and Sir Francis Drake all in one. If I should lose you, I'd do something really desperate. Now, oh. you see, she threatened to do something desperate, he wouldn't believe her. He left her, cast her aside, a woman scorned. So she killed him. Hmm, might be. I know it, and I can prove it. I've got a date with her right now. I don't know. What have you got to lose, Commissioner? All right, Steve. But only for an hour. Come on, remember? Man. Shall I tail him? Sergeant, I gave Abbott my word. I heard you. Ridden. What do we do now? Well, I'm going to Janet Price's apartment. Not alone you are. It's Lieutenant, this is Lieutenant Richard's car. You let him worry about that. He's using mine for a hearse. Come on, Shad, hurry up. Yes. Get the key to her apartment. This isn't the key. I knew there was more between you two than just a murder. I told you before, this is a skeleton key. It unlocks any door, remember? Cute. You know, she must sing better than I thought. Come on, Skip. Help me look for clues, will you? Hey, Lieutenant. Didn't he say this woman's name is Janet Price? Yes, why? There's one signed Ethel. Police headquarters. This is Commissioner Richards. No, Lieutenant Richards. Put out a call to all squad cars to pick up Steve Abbott for murder. Well, maybe they threw the chair away. Do you think? What? Otherwise, what good is it without it? What are you talking about? This pillow. It should have a chair to go with it or something. Let's see that. Are you doing something that has something to do with something, huh? Steve Abbott, how would you like somebody to do that to your pillow? Smell that. It smells like gunpowder. That's what it is. Skip, looks like you've solved the case. Uh-huh, and you didn't want me to help you. How? Those three bullets were fired into this pillow before Philip Wallace got them. You mean they weren't fired into him from a pistol? My guess is they came out of a shotgun. Oh. Now all I have to do is find it. Where? Well, first I'll look in George's apartment, then the Wallace house. Then what? Then round up all the suspects and see if I can get one of them to implicate himself. You mean himself. just like you do in the movies? Yeah. Only this is one time the detective's wife is not going to be there. Oh, Steve. I'm sorry, but you're going to go right home with Shad. Come on. Attention, all squads. Attention, all squads. 
Stephen Abbott, wanted for murder. Believed seen near Canal and Royal Streets. Why, that... And he promised. Oh, Shad, what are we going to do? I don't know nothing about you, Miss Abbott, but I'm leaving town. No, you're not, Shad. We've got to help Steve. Miss Abbott, I can't understand why you want to get all them suspects in the Wallace house. So Mr. Steve can implicate them. Suppose Mr. Abbott don't show up. Then we'll have to do it. Oh, I wouldn't figure too heavily on me, Miss Abbott. Get in there, Shad. <laughs> Lieutenant Richards on the phone, sir. Hello, Willie. Lieutenant Richards speaking. I'd appreciate it very much if you'd come over to Mr. Philip Wallace's house right away, boss. Is that you, Willie? Goodbye now. The next number is Denko 2762, and don't say boss. to inquisitive. What is we doing here? Searching for a shotgun. It should be here in the drawing room. Well, whatever it is, we're trespassing, ain't we? There's no time to think about that now, Shad. Help me look. Yes. Shad, where are you going? Out in the hall. There's more room for me to run. What I've been looking for. If that's me, where did I get that gun? my curiosity. Do you know who the murderer is yet? I'll be if I don't find a certain piece of evidence in the next 17 minutes. Come on, rump on it, bud. You better wait. Steve. Hello, Dell. Steve, I want to talk to you privately. Right now, I've got some important business. Maybe later. Hey, what are you doing up here? Somebody using Richard's name asked me to come up here. Oh. Ah, here we are. What, no lights? That's odd. No, it's probably just a fuse. Who's that? Connie? Yes. Oh. What are you prowling around for? What's the matter? There's somebody in the house, sir. Let me take that gun. You go fix the lights. Shotgun. To shoot yourself with, I hope. Would you mind explaining what you're doing up here, young lady? Seems to me she was trying to remove a little evidence. Let's see you prove that, copper. We're going to be able to prove a lot of things, sugar. Have a seat where you won't miss anything. You remember there were three slugs in Philip's body? Yes, very distinctly. Yeah, well, they weren't fired separately. 
They're all blown at once from this shotgun. That was a report you heard, Carney. But I saw Mr. Wallace twice after that. Oh, no, you didn't. The first time you saw the murderer wearing Phillips' dressing gown. He muffled his voice and told you the report was a backfire. The second time you saw me. Perhaps I'm being a bit dense, but how could the three bullets be fired from the shotgun at once? They were first fired from the target pistol into a pillow, which I found. Then the murderer took the slugs from the pillow and substituted them for the shot in a shotgun shell. Why did he go to all that trouble? To give himself an alibi. He wanted the police to believe that the killing happened at 9.55. That's why he set the dead man's watch and then broke it. That's why he used the trick with the three slugs. He knew the police would be questioning people about hearing three shots. They're not paying any attention to the single shot, which actually did the killing at least ten minutes earlier. One thing gave the murderer away. A poor hiding place for that pillow. Well, you got anything to say? I didn't kill him, you chump. I know you didn't, but you can tell us who did. Don't bother, Miss Price. You led us quite a chase, Steve, but now it's over. I'm arresting you for the murders of George and Philip Wallace. Don't be a dimwit, will you? I'm not the murderer, but somebody in this room is. I bring you up here to help Shad and you arrest Steve. Oh, I think you're mean. Mean? Well, I want to give you a chance to write him some letters. I love you, Angora Kitten. No! Oh! No! Oh! Really, you uh, quite sure you've got your man? Well, if it isn't Uncle Dan O'Dell. Carlson. I break you for this, Richards. I've done nothing. Nothing but head the city's gambling racket. What are you talking? Oh, Let go of me. Take it easy, Uncle Dan. My congratulations. Would you be needing me further? I don't think so. Well, I'll be trotting along the Mardi Gras ball, you know. Well, Steve. Lieutenant! Come out of there. Look, Steve, another costume just like Mr. Wallace. Take off that mask. If you gentlemen excuse me, I, I have an engagement. Skipper, hang on to him. Get him, boys! Take the front door. Someday he'll go too far. Drive me to my office on Front Street. Right. At that time, Mr. Wallace, you'll have to be satisfied with two murders. The police think you're the murderer, Mr. Abbott. I'll be somewhat of a hero after I kill you. No wonder you used that shotgun gag. You wouldn't have been able to hit Philip at any distance. Do you mind telling me what gave me away? That extra costume of yours. When I saw my houseboy with it on, I suddenly realized... As I was saying, you had Carney wear that costume in a parade while you were out knocking off George. That's almost exactly right. I wouldn't try that again. I won't. You know, I really don't enjoy shooting you. After all, you're a perfect stranger.
You mean you'd rather keep it in the family? Yes, I'd rather. Steve, the way you played up to my act. Act? Why, certainly. You don't really believe I thought you were the guilty one. Well, you dirty... No, boys. Darling, are you hurt? No, baby. The Price oh, girl right. told me the whole story. You killed George because he saw you killing Philip and was blackmailing you. Did she tell you she was blackmailing me, too? Yes, that's why she's on her way to the clink. Well, why did you kill Philip in the first place? I told you. He was a natural-born stinker. Lieutenant, the reporters are here. They want to talk to you. Uh, tell them I... Uh, tell them Lieutenant Abbott and I will see them in a minute. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> no, 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 Stevie, I insist. Oh, well, why not? No, Stevie, oh, I'm withdrawing sure. in your favor. After all, you're the one who solved the case. Now, that isn't quite true, Willie, old boy. You know, if it hadn't been for you, I probably wouldn't be here. The only fair thing is for me to withdraw. Boss, he seen the paper yet? No, 